everyone. My name is Ian and I'm an explainer here at the New York Hall of Science. Did you know that we actually live in a sea of something that's constantly all around us? And without it, we probably wouldn't be able to hear each other right now. Take a moment to think about what that might be. I bet some of you out there are thinking about water, since I said the word sea. But actually, the sea that I'm talking about is the air that's all around us. You see, air is what is known as a fluid. That means that it can freely move about and it will fill and take the shape of any container you put it in, much like water. To show off how this force works, my friend Giancarlo has a little demonstration for you all. Thanks, Ian. Hi, my name is Giancarlo, and I'm also an explainer here at the New York Hall of Science. Now let me give you a quick demonstration on how air pressure affects some of the objects around us. First, we need to know how strong this force is. Air pressure is normally applied at about 15 pounds per square inch. Meaning that if I have this rubber pad here with an area about 121 square inches, there should be about 1,800 pounds of pressure being applied on it. But if there's that much pressure, how am I able to lift up the rubber pad so easily? Well, we have to remember that air applies pressure equal in all directions. Because of this, the 1,800 pounds of pressure applied on the rubber pad is balanced out, meaning that I'm able to lift it up and move it around easily. Now, if air is applying all this pressure to everything and everyone it comes in contact with, how come we don't feel this force pushing down on us every day? There are two main reasons for this. First, we're all just used to it. We've lived on this earth for hundreds and hundreds of years, so our bodies have naturally adapted to earth's air pressure. So it's not as harmful to us anymore, and we're able to move around normally. The second reason is that we have air and other fluids inside of us that helps balance the external air pressure. Every time you breathe in air, you increase the air pressure. This internal pressure is constantly pushing outwards, which helps balance the external pressure that is constantly pushing inwards. This balance of forces from the inside and outside is known as equilibrium, which allows us to keep our normal shape and size. Now, what do you think would happen if we could manipulate the air pressure that was affecting an object. Take for instance, this balloon here. Now, balloons are normally made up of rubber and rubber has a very interesting property to it known as elasticity. This means that no matter how much I stretch, pull, or compress this balloon here, it always wants to return to its normal shape and size. Now, Ian's balloon is filled to the brim of air, meaning that the air pressure on the inside is constantly pushing outwards in all directions. This causes the balloon to stretch and expand. But we have to remember that there's air and air pressure on the outside of the balloon that's constantly pushing downwards on it in all directions. This means that right now, the balloon's current shape and size, it's at its equilibrium state meaning that the pressure on the inside of the balloon is balanced with the pressure on the outside. Now, what would happen if Ian were to remove some of the air that's surrounding the balloon? Let's introduce a special tool that can help us with that scenario, shall we? Introducing. Our vacuum sealed chamber. This device allows us to manipulate the air pressure that's around an object and observe what happens to it while inside the chamber. So when I attach this hose to our device here, I will be able to manipulate the air that's inside the chamber. And thus, I can reduce the amount of air pressure that's inside the chamber. Now, before we begin, I'd like to ask you, the viewer out there, what do you think is going to happen to our balloon here? 
let's remember that we're not going to add any air to the inside of the balloon. We're only going to be taking away some of the air that's inside the chamber. So keep that in mind. Activating the vacuum sealed chamber in three, two, one. Looks like our little balloon here isn't so little anymore, huh? So let's ask ourselves, what happened inside our chamber here? As you can see in this picture, there's a constant amount of pressure inside the chamber being pushed down on the balloon from all directions equally. Let's not forget the air inside the balloon whose pressure is pushing outwards in all directions, which is why the balloon is able to keep its shape and size. Now, when we turn on the vacuum, it starts to remove the air surrounding the balloon. In turn, this reduces the amount of air pressure around the balloon, and its internal pressure causes the balloon to increase in size. So now that we know why our balloon swelled up inside our chamber, let's ask ourselves another question. What do you think's going to happen when I unplug this hose here and allow some of the air that's all around us to rush back inside this chamber? I'll give you guys a moment to think about it, but if you're paying attention, you probably already know what's about to happen. Letting air back inside our chamber in three, two, one. And look at that. Our balloon has returned to its previous shape and size. Let's remember that wherever there's air, there's air pressure, meaning that when we allowed air to go back inside our chamber, the air pressure inside the chamber started to increase, which started to compress and squeeze on our balloon here. And thanks to the elastic properties of the balloon, since it's made out of rubber, the balloon was able to shrink back to its original shape and size. So to wrap everything up, let's review what we've learned today. First, we've learned that air is all around us and is constantly applying pressure equally in all directions. Next, we've learned that air pressure affects certain objects, making them easier or harder to lift and move around. And lastly, we've seen how we can manipulate air pressure that can affect an object's shape and size. In this case, we used a vacuum to manipulate the amount of air pressure surrounding a balloon, which changed its shape and size. Now, what do you think would happen if we were to put a balloon in a special environment with no air, such as outer space? If you like this video and would like to see others like it, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.